Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, for those who've just joined us, we are writing an operating system from scratch. Uh, last time, uh, in the last video, we have set ourselves up uh, into graphic mode. Um, that means that we have selected a video mode that had attributes we wanted, but that also means that we have lost the ability to write to screen for now. Because uh, since we are in graphics mode, we need to print uh, characters pixel by pixel, um, which is not something that we are equipped to do right now. But that's fine because today we are working on switching um, ourselves from real mode to virtual mode to 32-bit uh, mode. And um, since we are still going to need to read uh, stuff from disk using uh, BIOS infrastructure, and we can only access BIOS services in real mode. That means we are also going to need uh, to write, um, I guess, functions that will enable us to go from um, project mode to real mode and from real mode to project mode. Right, so that's what we are working on today. Let's get started. Before we get started on code, uh, I guess this is the best occasion to introduce this, which is the Intel uh, 64 and uh, IA32 architecture software developers manual. And uh, this is uh, all the volumes from one to four combined into a uh, single PDF of uh, about 5,000 pages. But worry not, we're not gonna go through all 5,000 pages. We're just gonna, um, I guess first thing I'm gonna do is uh, talk about a, uh, talk a bit about how this is structured, so that you guys can, um, if you want to play along, can find the info you are looking for easier. And then, uh, since we have uh, a roadmap defined, uh, we are just gonna look for the information we need for uh, each step. So. It makes for it makes for uh, easier reading. Um, overall, this uh, does read quite nicely. It's not very complicated. It it's pretty complete. Um, yeah, it's a it's a nice uh, it's a nice book. It's nice. Uh, it's nice bit bedtime reading. Right. So uh, I guess uh, let's talk about how this is split up. So we have four chapters. Uh, ignoring that chap volume, uh, yeah, they're called volumes. So, so we have four volumes, um, and uh, volume two and three are, are split into four sections. But uh, overall, we have four volumes. So volume one will talk about the workings or architecture of the CPUs, right? So we have pretty much all families uh, since the earliest ones and all the way down to uh, very new families um, and it addresses basically everything from uh, instruction, loading, execution, data types um, uh, and goes into details of alignment, stuff like that. So basically everything you need to know about how CPUs, Intel CPUs work uh, are written here in this uh, first chapter. Um, yeah, so basically goes uh, over all details. And, uh, we're not gonna go into any more details than that. Then we have chapter two, which is basically the instruction set reference. Uh, so if you remember, we have used, uh, in the past, we have used this uh, x86 and uh, 64 instruction reference. This is basically taken from the um, software developers manual uh, that we're looking at. And this is basically ch chapter uh, volume two of the uh, uh, of this, right? So volume two just goes on and on about uh, the instruction sets. Uh, so it gives uh, the details of the workings of every instruction, which is basically the same thing that we find here uh, in, I think, in my opinion, nicer format since we can uh, search for them easier. Right, so that's for volume two. 
Uh, volume four uh, is vol model specific registers uh, and MSRs are uh, basically registers that exist in some CPUs but not in others. Uh, we are not going to be looking at this volume at all. Uh, this is something for, uh, I guess, uh, people who want to target specific CPUs and do specific uh, optimizations for every family. Uh, not something that we want to tackle. So the bulk of our reading will be in volume three, which is the uh, systems programming man uh, guide. Um, or basically this underlines everything that needs to be done to set up the CPU into different modes, uh, interact with CPU, handle interrupts, uh, and it goes through uh, the, the whole thing. So uh, chapter one is, uh, sorry, chapter two is a, an architecture overview of how CPU basically uh, sees memory and interacts with memory. memory. Uh, and um, chapter three is uh, memory management. Chapter four is uh, virtual memory. It's paging and stuff like that. Chapter five is protection, uh, so memory protection and, and segment protection. Uh, so chapter six is interrupt and exception handling. So all these are uh, chapters we're going to um, be looking at. Chapter seven is user interrupts. Uh, basically, this, these are software interrupts. Um, right, uh, chapter eight is task management for uh, multitasking. And chapter nine is uh, SMPs, multiprocessor management. Um, yeah. So chapter 10, again, is uh, processor initialization and uh, management. Chapter 11 is the APEC going to look at all of these. Chapter 12, I think we are not going to look at very much. This is this has to do with uh, how to, uh, with basically memory caching, right? Memory caching control. Uh, chapter 13 is for MMX. We're not going to look into it very much. Um, and I guess that's pretty much those are all the chapters that we are actually interested in. Um, yeah. So I, I guess chapters one through, uh, or sorry, uh, two through uh, 11 are the main chapters we're going to read. Um, other chapters being just, I guess, nice to read if you want to extend our system uh, for further. All right. So... Um, Let's see how uh, this uh, chapter... So, so I'm at chapter 2, volume 3, chapter 2. And here we are looking at system architecture overview. And um, so pay attention because um, this, um, this book will have different info for... 32 bits and 64 bits. So make sure that when you are reading uh, some data structure or something, you know that it's the one you want to work with. Uh, so basically here is the uh, system level registers and data structures uh, for 32. And if we look down here, you can see that it's um, for 64 uh, with uh, PML4 uh, or uh, page map in level four, and it's a bit more involved for uh, 64 bits. But overall, it's the same, I guess, the same ideas between the two. So we can just, uh, I guess, move along. Right, so we want to um, go from read mode into project mode, right? Uh, so here, if we look at volume 3a, chapter 2.2, modes of operation, uh, we can see that we have uh, descriptions of each mode that we have. Uh, so basically the ones we are interested in is real address mode, which is uh, what we call real mode, project mode, which is where we want to be, and um, IA32E mode, which is the 64-bit long mode. That's called uh, the long mode. Um, 
Right, and here we have a sort of state machine that um, lets us know uh, how to go from every mode to every other, right? Uh, so we can see that all reset vectors uh, here, here, uh, all go to real address mode. And if we read uh, the, the paragraph that follows, it says that the processor is placed in real address mode following power up or a reset. So basically, whenever you power up a computer, it goes to uh, this real mode. Uh, and then we can see that we can go from real mode to projected mode and uh, to other modes. So, so the path we're going to take is real mode to projected mode and then to long mode afterwards. And to know how to uh, change modes, you can see that here we have uh, C also section 10.9 10, 10 mode switching and section 4.1.2 page in mode enabling. So I guess we can just go ahead to section 10, mode switching, and see what we have there. That brings us to chapter 10.8, uh, uh, software initialization for projected mode operation. So here, basically, we are told that we need a, um, I guess, a minimal set of data structures to be present in memory and configured for the CPU to be able to operate correctly in project mode. Um, so here we are told that there's something called IDT, GDT, TSS, um, and some optional stuff uh, if paging is, be, is to be used. I don't think we're going to use paging when we are in 32-bit mode. We are still in the bootloader, so we don't really need it. Uh, a code segment that contains the code to be executed. Yeah, that should be fine. We could have that. Uh, one or more core modules that contain them. Yeah, so that, that, that's that's fine also. Um, so software initialization code must also initialize the following systems. So we need to initialize the uh, GDTR and optionally the IDTR. I guess, uh, yeah, so, so I guess the R is register and GDT should be the same as here, where we'll, uh, we'll see what that means in a bit. Uh, control registers C1 through C4 must be initialized and um, yeah, so this is, we don't really care about that. Um, okay, the processor can be switched to project mode by loading control register C0, CR0 uh, with a value that sets the PE flag uh, a bit zero. Okay, cool. Uh, right, so mode switching. Uh, switching to project mode. Um, I guess first thing we need to do is disable interrupts with a CLI instruction. Um, right. Okay. Execute LGDT instructions to load the GDTR register with the base address of the GDT. So we need to, basically we need to discover what this GDT is all about. Execute a move CR0 instruction that sets the PE flag. And optionally PG flag. Okay, so we there's I guess there's this register called uh, CR zero for uh, control register. I guess that has bits that need to be set for us to move into um, projected mode. Uh, okay, so immediately following the move, execute a far jump or far call instruction. Uh, this operation is a far Typically, a far jump or call to the next instruction. Okay, so basically, we need to uh, after this, we need to execute a far jump to allow the processor to move move us effectively into uh, projected mode. Uh, the jump or call instruction immediately f um, immediately after the move uh, CR zero instruction changes the flow of execution and serializes the processor. Okay, so just what we've said. If paging is enabled, we don't really care about that. If a local descriptor table, uh, I guess local descriptor table should be uh, what they called LDT. Okay, is going to be execu uh, used, execute the L LDT. So I guess L is for load and then LDT, okay. Fine, um, okay, and R is for register, I guess. Execute the uh, LTR uh, instruction to load the 
task register with a segment selector. Uh, okay, um, need more info about that. After entering uh, predicted mode, uh, the segment registers continue to hold the contents they had in real address mode. The jump or call instruction in step four resets the CS register. Um, perform one of the following operations to update the content of the remaining segment registers. So we have to either reload them or... Um, okay, okay, I see. I see. So basically this jump we need to do here uh, in step four will need to do a far jump, meaning that we need to give it the uh, uh, segment also. So it will use the new segment and put it into uh, CS, right? Um, but then we still have all the other segment uh, registers that need to be manually set. So we will do moves into every one of those uh, registers. Right, so then execute the all LIDT instruction to load, blah, 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 okay, and then execute the STI to re-enable the um, interrupts. Okay, so uh, random failures can occur if other instructions exist between step three and four above. Okay, so they, they weren't kidding when they said to put the move immediately uh, or jump immediately after the move. Cool. And I guess we also will need to know how to switch back to real mode. So uh, disable interrupts with CLI, uh, paging we don't care. Transfer the program control to a readable segment that has a limit of 64 kilobytes. Uh, this operation loads the CS register. Okay, so this is fine. So basically just put into CS the register that has uh, some config here. Uh, load segment registers SSTS with, okay, so basically we're doing the inverse operation that we did to move into, um, to move into project mode. Uh, and then we, okay, so that's fine. Uh, segment register must be loaded with a non-null segment selectors or the segment register will be unusable in, in remote, okay? And then we do uh, LIDT. Uh, then we clear the PE flag in CR0, uh, which basically switches us back to real mode. And then we execute uh, immediately afterwards a jump instruction that will basically put the CPU effectively into uh, real mode. Um, Okay, cool. So um, I guess we reload the other registers. Right, so what I still need to know is what the hell is a GDT or whatever. Um, so let's try to see if we have that uh, somewhere here. Uh, otherwise, let's just look for it. Okay, so um, under segment descriptors in uh, chapter 3.4.5, uh, we have uh, here that segment descriptor is a generic term for anything that's uh, LDT or GDT, and they basically all have this structure here, um, which tells us that, um, so what do we have here? We have a segment limit. We have uh, two, so, so this is a word, so this is two bytes or 16 bits. Here we have two bytes of a base address. Um, and this tells us that we want to take the lower two bytes of the base address. And here we have another byte of base address. So we can have, uh, and here we have uh, the fourth byte of base address if we want to have uh, a, uh, I guess, AD word. So here we'd have the two lower bytes, here we have the third one, and here we'd have the fourth one. 
Um, and here we have something that's called type and that has um, so type is segment type. Here we have it. Um, so I guess it's encoded on four bits. Here we have S, which is the scripter type, zero is system, and one is code or data. Here we have uh, two bits for DPL. Okay. So the scripter privilege level, whatever that means. Uh, P is for segment present. Okay. One bit. Here we have seg limit on four bits. What's seg limit? Segment limit. Cool. Uh, AVL available for use by system software. So available, uh, bit 20. And here we have L, which is a uh, 64 bit um, code segment. Okay. I guess L is for long. Here we have uh, DB, which is, uh, uh, okay, default, default operation size. 16-bit segment or 32-bit segment. G is granularity. And here we have, uh, okay. So I guess we can, we should go ahead and read um, these things. Um, okay. Oh, okay, right. Okay, I see. Uh, so basically, the segment limit field um, defines how long this uh, segment will be. Um, and the segment limit is basically related to granularity. If the uh, granularity is set to, or rather if it's clear, we are going to um, address in byte increments. Uh, meaning that we can only address uh, how many bytes this limit can encode. If uh, G, the G flag, is set, um, then we have the increments be 4 kilobytes, um, which means that we basically multiply uh, the range that we can uh, address by uh, 4,096, um, yeah, which is basically takes us from uh, one megabyte to four gigabytes. Um, okay, so that's for segment limit. Uh, base address, I guess, defines the location of byte zero. That's uh, fairly okay. Type field um, indicates the segment or gate type specifies the kind of access to be made. Um, okay, so I guess we need to look at the specifics for uh, code and data segment description, descriptor types. Um, okay, so keep that in mind. S, uh, descriptor type flag specifies whether the segment descriptor is for a system segment, uh, if it's clear, or code or data segment if it's set. Okay. Uh, privilege level basically can range from 0 to 3, 0 being... Uh, okay, so I guess this is um, what's called the rings. So ring 0 being the highest privilege level and ring 3 being uh, usually user space or the lowest privilege level. Um, okay, so P A indicates whether the segment is present in memory or not present if it's clear. Um, generate a segment not present exception NP when a segment selector that points. Okay, so basically this just indicates that the segments is ready, the segment is ready to be used or not. Uh, DB default operation size. Um, okay, so performs different functions depending on whether the segment descriptor is an executable code segment an expand down data segment or a stack segment. This flag should always be set to one for. Okay. Um, uh, 
Okay. So, uh, I guess this dictates how the CPU reads um, instructions. Uh, just by quickly skimming this uh, paragraph, stack segment. Um, okay. Okay, so I guess the same thing here controls how the stack or how wide the stack segment um, stack pointer is, etc. So let's just uh, skip that. And uh, so G, I guess, is the granularity flag. Um, if it's clear, segments uh, segment limit is interpret is interpreted in units of byte. If it's set, it's interpreted of units of page or uh, for kilobytes. Um, when granularity flag is set, off the offset and not tested when checking. Um, right. Okay. Okay. Okay, I see. So basically here what, what's been said is that since we are addressing uh, in chunks of 4K, and um, if you remember, so let me just bring up the calculator again. So uh, let me just go ahead here and type in um, 4K, right? So it's hex 1000, but in binary, you can see that the uh, lower 12 bytes are always zero. And that what this says here, um, just get rid of this. So what this says here is that the lower, uh, so 12 least significant bits of an offset are not tested when checking um, if it's valid against the segment, meaning that uh, it will just ignore the 12 lower uh, bits because they should always be, well, it doesn't care what they are, basically is what it's saying. Uh, okay, L is um, bit one one of the same double word. Um, negative sixty bit code. Uh, is it? Okay. Okay, so basically this just uh, does the processor uh, use sixty four bit um, um, instructions, I think. Um, Okay, available for use by system software. Okay, uh, fine. Um, code and data segment descriptor types. Um, okay, so I guess here we have the four uh, bits for the descriptor type, and I guess. Um, so if it's zero, if it's data and read only, we should put this in there. Okay, so I guess uh, bit 11 um, dictates if it's a data or a code segment. Okay. Um, bit 10... Um, basically says that it's an expand down segment. Um, bit uh, nine tells it that it's uh, read write. If it's one, if it's zero, it's just read only. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm looking for uh, the uh, cells where only one bit is set or only one bit is not set. And that basically tells me what that bit uh, does in either case. So here we have W set, it goes to read only. And here we have only W that's not set from this tree. And uh, sorry, here it's uh, read write and here it's uh, read only. Um, okay, so the W controls if it's writable or just readable. Um, and the A, Okay, so A basically says that 
we have accessed it. Okay. Do we have, um, I guess no, uh, we have no description here. Um, uh, okay, so for the, the segments, the three lower bytes are interpreted as accessed, right enable and expansion direction. See table three one, I guess this is table three one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the segments can be read only or read by segments depending on settings of write enable bit. Um, S. Um, okay, so we don't care about that. Okay, so here if um, 11 is set, bit 11 is set, we are a code segment as opposed to data segment. And uh, I guess by default, if everything else is not set, it's execute only. Um, if A is set, okay, so A is always accessed in both cases. Um, R here is execute and read. Okay, so very interesting. Uh, if the segments is, segment is um, set up as a code segment, there we have no way to write to it, which is very good for uh, security. So basically, if you want to write to a segment, you need to go through a uh, data segment and not just a code segment. Cool. Um, right, so here, uh, execute read, uh, A is accessed as always, and C is conforming, whatever that means. Um, yeah, no idea what that means. Uh, so, uh, okay, for code segments, uh, okay. Okay, so it can be either a conforming, non conforming, a conforming. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but okay, fine. I guess we have a bit of a start here. So basically we need to um, set something that looks like uh, like this uh, for our CPU to be able to um, go into breaking mode. Um, okay, uh, so let's take a look at some other stuff. So here, um, if we look at this other, uh, so this is uh, OS Dev uh, and GDT page, you can see that GDT is pointed to by the value in GDTR, and it's loaded using the uh, LGDT instruction. Um, okay, so basically it has uh, this structure, the GDTR should have um, okay, so 0 to 15 is this size, and uh, 0 to 31 is, um, is the mode. Okay. Uh, so the size is the size of the table in bytes, subtracted by one. Uh, okay. Okay, so we can have zero. And offset is the linear address of the GDT. Um, okay, so when, whenever you see linear address, you have to think about uh, virtual memory. Um, okay, so the first, okay, that's fine. I guess we could go here, two, four, one, two, four, one. Um, okay, okay, cool. Uh, so let's see here. Um, so this tells us that we need to have the GDTR. Okay, okay, I see, I see how it's structured. So GDTR register basically points here it has a base address and then a limit, uh, which is um, 
to uh, yeah, I guess this is a D word and this is a just a word. Okay. And then it points into a table. Um, and the table has an item zero that's not used, but that should be there. Um, okay. Okay, fine. So I guess it's not used, but it should be there. And then we can uh, put all the modes that we want into our table. Okay, so let's go back here. Uh, so here we they, they talk about the table, how it's structured. So it should the first one should be null. Um, yeah, it can be null because it's not used. And then here we have, um, I guess, all the entries that we uh, we have. Uh, the first entry should always be null and subsequent entry should be used instead. Um, okay, so each entry in the table has a complex structure. Okay, well, basically it's the structure that we've seen. Um, and I guess the access byte, so these bytes here are called the access bytes. Uh, okay, so this is stuff that we've um, we've seen. Here we have flags. I guess these are also stuff that we've seen. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's try to set that up. Okay, right. Let's get coding. Um, I guess we can start by doing something like. Um, ah, it's fine. So let's start by uh, doing a CLI. So I, I guess that's the first thing that they asked us to do. Um, that's, uh, so let me just go back to um, so modes of operation. Um, and then it should be mode switching. Right, so uh, disable interrupts. So step one, disable interrupts a CLI instruction, and then um, we need to execute uh, LGDT. Right, so let's execute um, LGDT, and we need to give it, um, I guess, some address. We still don't know what to give it for now, so let's just mark it as such. And then we need to do something. Uh, we need to do uh, some move of CR0 of some value, right? Um, and then immediately after this, we need to do a jump. Um, and it should be a far jump. So, and it should have some uh, segment uh, descriptor, and then it should have some address where we're gonna jump to. And what we are going to do is, I am going to actually set up the jump to jump just here and call this uh, predicted start, right? So um, I want to have the address of this predicted start so I can, for that I can do a bit of math. So I can just take the um, predicted start, predicted uh, start and um, subtract from it the address of the star of the file or basically how far we are from the side of the file. And then we add it to the load address that we are in, right? Uh, since we know that we are loaded at 0x800 and this should give us the actual address of this um, label in memory. Uh, so now we just need to uh, figure out what the, um, uh, what's it called? The segment, uh, should be for, for us to do the, the long jump. Okay, so here, once we do the jump, so what they're telling us is, uh, so let me bring up the uh, browser again. So uh, immediately following, we did the jump. Um, yep. Uh, Pagen is not enabled. We're not gonna enable it, so that's fine. If a local, we're not gonna have that either. Execute an LTR. I think we're not gonna do that for now. Um, 
Okay, so here they are telling us to reload the uh, remaining registers with some values, with some correct values. So let's try to at least set that up. Uh, to do that. We know that we cannot move um, into them directly, so let's set some value into AX, right? And then we're going to have that value, oops, a value moved into um, the S. Um, Yes. Um, so uh, FS, I guess. And then um, what was the last one? GS. Uh, AX, right. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And also SS. There we go. So here we have. Uh, so if I go back here. So here I did this so now I guess we can just um, re-enable interrupts um, yeah let, let's skip this one for now let's just uh, try to block it in um, the work that we need to do so now we can just re-enable interrupts and now we are in uh, bracket mode. Cool. Right, cool. So let's try to work out uh, these things step by step. So first we need uh, the uh, address that we uh, need to put in the GDT register. And if we go back here, uh, what we are told is that we need this structure here that looks something like this size and offset and we need to load the address of this structure into the um, gdtr basically All right so let's try to block that out um, so i'll just go here all the way down um, and we are going to call it um, gdtr uh, for example and so what do we have here? We know that we have a word first, which is the um, limit, right? And then we have a double word, which is the base. Um, so that, did I do that correctly? Um, they call it offset, but yeah, it, it's fine. So this would be offset. Um, so the limit here would have to be, okay, so uh, this, these two here would be, uh, the limit is the size of uh, the table and offset is the address of that table. So let's create a GDT, um, GDT table. Uh, yeah, I guess the T in GDT is already the table, so let's not add table to it. And here we'd have uh, uh, some entry, right? Uh, uh, I guess some entry zero, uh, one, two, etc. And here, this offset here would be basically GDT, right? This would be the address of this. Um, now, for the limit, we gonna need to basically get the size of this. Um, and I guess the way to do that is we can just go here and do GDT and as a label. Um, and here we can do a bit of math, we can do GDT and uh, we'll sweep that, minus GDT, and um, here if we go back, they say that it's the size minus one, um, so we need to uh, subtract one from that. Right, so minus one, um, we don't need these. Um, okay, so I guess now we can just go ahead and tell it that this needs to be uh, what I call it GDTR. Uh, okay, now let's figure out how to fill in this uh, stuff. So I guess here we have, uh, if I go back to the browser, we have the table that has. Um, 
So many entries and every entry looks something like this. It's a segment descriptor, basically. So, um, and we also need the entry zero to be uh, basically a big uh, zero, but still uh, respecting this, um, I guess, structure. Okay, so let's, first of all, let's block this structure out. So what we have is a, um, so let's call this entry zero. Um, we'll call it um, null entry, right? Here, what we, um, let me just um, do this correctly. And here, what we have is, first of all, we need a double word, okay? Um, so here, we know that it will all be zero, so it's fine. Uh, and then after the double word, we have uh, another word, which is the base. So the word, which is the base, uh, oops. Um, uh, actually, let me just label this for now. Uh, so this would be the limit. Um, this would be the base, but um, I guess um, zero up to 15. Um, so the the lower two uh, bytes of the base, and then we would need. Uh, let me just go back to the browser first. So we did that. We did that, and then we have another uh, base. Um, so one and two. Okay. So here we'd have a byte, which would be. Uh, another base uh, component. So from 16 to, uh, what was it, to 23, 23. And then we'd have another byte, which uh, would be, um, so I guess this is what they call access byte. Uh, let's call it access. And then here we'd have, uh, this bits um, and then after that we have so one so okay so we still only have two uh, bytes so let's do that so this one here and this one here and this last one would be the base but um, from 24 all the way to uh, 32 right um, or should be 31 since we've uh, indexed it with zero. And here um, we have, um, I guess, the second part of the limit. Um, hold on, let me just go back to the browser quickly. Um, yeah, so the second part of the limit. So I, I grouped these two because um, uh, I didn't want to split them into bits. Uh, it's useless, so let's just group them. So here we have uh, four bits of the limit and then four flag bits um, and zero being reserved, so okay, it's fine. Um, okay, so let's do that. So this would be limit. Um, I guess here we need to do zero to 15. Oops, uh, this was supposed to be this. And here we'd have 16 to, um, I guess, 23, since it's only, huh, no, not, not even 23, so it would be 20 or 19, actually. Um, just put this back. Cool. Uh, plus the flags um, there. Okay, so here we have our, our uh, null entry, so we need to now try to think about um, which other entries we'd want. So we definitely want um, a, um, a data segment and a code segment. So we'd have at least two of those, right? So let's write them down. So code... Uh, um, yeah, let's call it code 
entry. Um, and here we'd have, so basically let me just uh, copy these down here. Oops, uh, yeah, that's not what I wanted to do either. Um, yeah, let me just copy. Uh, there we go. Uh, okay, so uh, here we have this blocked out. Let's also do the same for our um, um, data segment. And let's see what we need to put into these. Um, so I guess the limit, we want them to be as big as possible. Um, hold on, let me just go back to the browser and see what we can do. Um, okay, so let me just go back here. Okay, so I guess um, we don't really need to split memory into regions now. Um, so what we are going to do is basically just go ahead and uh, set this as wide as it'll go and do the same thing here. So basically, I just want to have one uh, segment that's uh, covering the the whole memory. Um, yeah, that would be that would be good. Uh, right, so here we have uh, FFFF, which is the, the biggest value that we can fit into this uh, word here. And we'll also um, put here the limit. Um, so let me just add an F here. Um, and wait, no, okay, actually, not this one. This one was fine. So it was this. This and I actually um, um, should probably swap these out here and do something like this with this, right? Um, so this would basically mean that um, uh, actually four, um, I think. Uh, so this basically means that the limit comes uh, to the left of the flags, right? Uh, should be this uh, uh, this part here, uh, this part here, uh, and this part here is the flags. Uh, so okay, so we've set the limit as far as it'll go, right uh, here, here, and here. And now we want the base address. Base address is basically where the zeroth. Um, so basically, if we address offset zero on this. Uh, segment, where does that map into memory? And what we want to do is we want to flat map the memory for now. So we want um, offset zero for this uh, segment here to be also the actual offset zero on, on, on physical memory. So we'll leave this as zero for now here and here also. Um, and also all everything that space will be zero. So this, this will be zero and this will be zero. So this, this, and this uh, will remain as zeros. Um, actually, just to show that, I will just do this, um, just to, to show that we've actually thought about this and we don't really need to come back to it. Cool, so we've set the base also. So let's take a look at what we need to do next. So access bytes. Uh, access byte, we have quite a few things in it. Um, and I think we got, we're going to need our uh, trusty calculator. So let's just bring that up here, um, clean it, and we go to this uh, nice mode here where we can set bits. Uh, so present bit, I think, I feel like present bit should always be there um, since we're not really going to do anything crazy with it. Right, uh, then uh, let's also, I, I guess the access bit is something that's set by the CPU. Um, so we'll keep it at zero. Uh, read write bit. Um, I guess this read write we've seen already that it controls um, read write, but also 
Um, no, it controls if a data segment is writable, and it controls if it's uh, if a code segment is readable. So um, I guess for our code segment and our the data segments, we want them to to be readable and uh, writable. So we'll set the RW bit to one always, I think. Um, if clear, okay, so it should be set. Cool. Um, so direction bit, conforming bit. Um, um, so if it's set to one, the segment grows down in memory. So basically, um, kind of like a stack. Um, which is not something that we want. So we want it to be clear for data segments. And um, if set one code in this segment can be executed from an equal or lower privileged level. Hmm. Uh, let's just keep it as zero for now. We'll see if we need to change it. Uh, execute a little bit, if clear. Uh, it's data segment, if one, it's code segment. So let's work on a code segment now. So we'll set the uh, third byte. This is this makes it officially a code segment, right? Uh, S is the uh, descriptor byte. Actually, uh, Uh, yeah, so the descriptor byte, type byte, if clear, the descriptor is a system segment. Uh, if set, it's a code or data segment, so we definitely want to set that one. Um, so it's bit four, so set that. And DPL, um, so zero is the highest, and we are currently uh, writing a bootloader and we'll we're writing a kernel, so it should be set as zero. Okay, so I guess we're done with this, and the value we have is 9a. Um, okay, so let's go back to uh, code and use the value that we have. Yep, just move this out of the way. Um, Right, so what we did now is the access flag. So this should be mine, um, mine A for our code segment. And if I go back here and see, uh, and flip the execute switch, um, sorry, flip the execute bit, which basically makes it um, a data segment if it's clear. So which is three, so flip three, and that gives me 92 or uh, 0x92 so that's what I'll go back here and put into here so 92 cool um, so now we just need to have the flags right so flags we go back again to our browser uh, we go ahead and just uh, clear this out um, Right, so flags are here. Uh, zero is reserved, so it's always uh, zero. Uh, G is the granularity. Uh, actually, let's start from from uh, from the bottom first. So one, uh, if it's set, it defines a sixty-four bit code segment. Um, when set, DB should always be clear. Uh, blah 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 blah. Okay. Um, if it's set, okay, so I guess L will keep it as zero for now. Um, I don't see why we set it to anything else. Uh, DB, if it's set, uh, defines a 32 bit protected mode segment. So we want to set that. And the granularity flag also needs to be set because we've seen that. Uh, if it's not set, we only have uh, one byte uh, blocks, so we can only cover one megabyte of memory, uh, given our limit. So yeah, let's set that also, and that gives me a value of 0xc. 
and I know that um, we're going to have to move that by um, by four. Yeah, so that gives me C0. So if I order that with the value that we already have set, so here we have uh, 0F uh, or C0, that means it's CF, right? And I guess it's the same thing applies to our data segment also. So that should be fine. Um, now, um, I'm trying to think if we are going to need um, um, I guess other registers um, other entries here because uh, they say that we can have also an entry for 16-bit in um, so here if we go back here and we read um, so AGD can have both 16-bit and 32-bit selectors at once. So we can have um, entries in the table for 32-bits, like what we did now, but we can also add entries for 16-bit. And I'm just trying to think if that's something that we will need. Um, because we are going to need to switch back and forth uh, between uh, real mode and, um, and projected mode. Uh, to access the BIOS um, services. So I'm trying to think if that's something that we will need. For, for now, I'll keep it in mind, and if we need it, I'll just go back and add it, okay? Okay, so we have um, our GDT table and our GD register um, done here. So um, I guess we have two things to figure out. We need first of all to figure out what we put here in the uh, control register zero to enable um, project mode and we also need to figure out what um, to put here in the segment selector to basically jump to our new 32-bit uh, uh, project mode code. Right, so first of all, let's figure out this one because I think it's uh, it's the easier part. So let me just bring up the browser again. And here we have uh, chapter three, uh, uh, four, two segment selectors. So it says that a segment selector is a 16-bit identifier for a segment. Um, it does not point directly to the segment. It's basically some sort of index then, right? Okay, so yeah, okay, they, they, they see it clearly here that it's an index. Right, so here we have index uh, bits 3, 2 through 15. Uh, select one of the, right, okay, descriptors in the GDT or LDT. Um, the processor multiplies the value by 8. Um, okay, okay, I see. And TI is table indicator flag. Um, so RPL is requested privilege level. And table is either GDT or LDT. Okay. And it looks something like this. So the index goes from 3 to 15. We have a table indicator um, in byte two, bit two, sorry, and we have bits uh, zero and one uh, are the uh, RPL. And here we read that RPL uh, specifies the privilege level of the selector. Uh, okay, so basically it's the same thing. Um, we have values from zero to three, zero being the most privileged. Um, okay, cool. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's. Uh, try to figure out uh, how to use this in our uh, case. So if we go back to code, and also I'll try to bring up the calculator here. Uh, actually, let me just make this a bit smaller. There we go. Okay, so what we have here is that we 
have this entry here, um, which is the second entry. Uh, actually, let me just do this. And we know that we have a 16-bit uh, uh, segment selector of which bits, um, so 0 and 1 are the uh, requested uh, privilege level. And we have our segments at privilege 0. Uh, we've set them as 0 in the access uh, bits. Uh, so bits 0 and 1 remain as 0. And per, uh, the bit 2 was... Um, hold on, I forgot. So bit 2 was... Um, um, so table indicator, and it would be 0 if it's a GDT table. Otherwise, it would be 1. And we have a GDT table, so it'd be 0. Okay, so these three bits would be zero. And then uh, from bit three to 15, we put in the index into our table of the uh, entry we want to uh, jump to. And here we want to jump to entry uh, one, I think. Oops, uh, just go back here. Yeah, so here uh, we want to jump to entry one. So I guess we could just put one in there. Um, so if we wanted to jump to entry 2, which is the data entry, uh, we'd probably use something like this. And if we had entry 3, we'd have something like this. It's a drive as well. Okay, so um, I guess we can just go here, use uh, our segment, which is 8. Uh, so here we can just put in 0x8. And that's done. So now what remains to be seen is uh, whatever the hell we're going to put into CR0 to enable um, bracket mode. Let's do that. Okay, so um, in volume 3, uh, chapter 2.5, we have control registers. Uh, so we have, we have uh, description, uh, what every register does. So here we have, we know that um, some registers will only be available in 64-bit mode. Um, otherwise, here we have um, registers 0 to 3 um, that we can use in any mode, I think, except one that's reserved so that we, that, that one we don't really touch. Uh, so CR0 contains... Uh, contains system control flags that control open mode and states of the processor. Okay, so I guess we are told that this, this is the one we use. And here we have a nice diagram of what the uh, control register looks like. So we have, uh, I guess, bits that control uh, states and behavior of the processor. And we need to... Um, so we need to, to figure out what every one of those does. So um, uh, CR0PG, I guess we're starting from the highest bit. Um, so paging. Uh, uh, okay, so enables paging when set, uh, disables paging when clear. Okay, good. So that's, uh, that's enough for me. Uh, I know that paging will be um, disabled for now. We're not going to do visual memory stuff. We're just going to keep it. Uh, flat, uh, and just address uh, physical memory for now. Um, CD is cache disable. Um, so when the CD and NW flags are clear, caching of memory locations for the whole of physical memory in the processor's internal and external caches is enabled. Um, okay, so uh, I guess, yeah, it's a cache disable. So uh, it should be clear. Um, Okay, caching is restricted. Um, okay, must be set. Must be okay, cool. Um, so not right through. Um, I guess this uh, disables the writing through cache. Um, OK. 
Okay. Yep. So I guess that's it. Uh, alignment mask uh, enables automatic alignment check checking when set. Disables alignment checking when clear. Okay. Right protect um, when set inhibits supervisor level procedure from writing to read only pages. Um, okay. Um, this flag facilitates implementation of copy and write. Okay. Uh, okay, so I guess if we try to write to this, it raises some exception, and then you know that you can or you have to basically now copy the page instead of just mapping. All right, cool. Uh, numeric error, we don't care. Uh, extension type, I don't think we care. Task switched, again, don't care. Uh, EM emulation, um, yeah, um, or something that we want. For now, uh, monitor coprocessor. Um, okay, that's not something that we want, and the last bit, bit zero of CR zero is protection enable. Okay, so I guess this is the one that we want. Enables protected mode when set, enables real address mode when clear. Um, this flag does not enable paging directly, it only enables segment level protection. Okay, to enable paging, both PE and PG flags must be set. Also see uh, mode switching, but that's where we came from. Okay. Um, so I guess, um, right. So I guess what we need to do here is we just need to set the very first bit of, uh, CR0, right? So what, let's do that. So we need to move, uh, into, uh, CR is 32 bits. So move it into EAX, uh, CR0. Uh, I think this is legal. And then we're going to add uh, or and AX. Um, no, we're not going to and it. We're going to or it with one. Right. And then we're going to move it back into, uh, into CR0. So this will basically take care of setting uh, the last bit to one. We could also have just done uh, something like uh, this, EAX uh, zero, which would set the bit, but uh, I guess uh, the OR is the more common way that you'd see this uh, done. Okay, so, so now we have jumped over to this regular size. So we need to figure out what to put into our other uh, registers, right? So I guess this is the same thing again. So let me just uh, bring up the uh, the calculator. Uh, we know that these two will be zero. So I'm trying to figure out what the, is the uh, segment uh, selector that we need for uh, our data segment. So these two will be zero since we want privilege level zero. This one would be zero because we want a GDT. Uh, and this one would be 0, 1, because it's uh, 2. And we have uh, this data entry here is 0, 1, 2. It's the second. Uh, so it's, it's, um, it's index is 2, basically. And this gives me um, a, a um, selector of 0x10. We're going to put that here. We're going to put that in all our segments. Um, as a data segment, right? Cool. So now we have um, successfully moved into project mode, right? So here at this point, we are into project mode. What we need to do for now is we need to um, go ahead and call the rest of our code. And I guess um, we could do that by just, uh, I guess we're going to jump into uh, 0x8 and um, I guess whatever our uh, uh, protected funk would be, right? Um, there we go. So this is what we are going to do next in the next video. 
Um, and this projected funk here will be our uh, program in C because aside from the next uh, video, we're gonna start writing the rest of this uh, second stage in C, meaning that here we'll have uh, a sort of main function and we'll have to jump or call, um, I guess jump is more like, like uh, is more what we want to do. Um, so here we'd have our main function in C at some address, uh, and then we jump into there, uh, and then it will take control uh, in project mode, of course. So now what we need to do is, we are going to need to define functions to go from uh, project mode back to real mode, and then we're gonna have to define the opposite also, uh, functions to go from uh, real into project mode. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so here in helpers include, we're gonna try to write those functions. Uh, as always, we're just gonna have to add our usage here. Um, so let's think about this uh, for a bit. So basically we'd want to switch mode and then jump into the next instruction that needs to be executed into the new mode. So going from um, projected to real, we'd have, uh, so let's uh, let's do some example. We'd have uh, um, instruction, instruction, um, right? And here we'd want to do uh, int 0, 010, for example. Uh, but we can't do it because we are in currently in uh, protected mode, right? So what we need to do is we need to um, do something. So change, uh, or let's call it protected uh, to real, right? And this would put us into protected mode, but it would also need to jump into this instruction here. And right after this, we're gonna do some uh, other instructions, etc. And then here we'd want to have, uh, to, to move our uh, flow again into uh, projected mode, so we need to do uh, something like uh, real uh, to protected, right? And here we have, uh, we are in projected mode. So one way to do this is a uh, trick we've already used, I think, when we did the, when we did the um, relocation here of our code, if you remember correctly, we have called into our relocate, which basically put the address of relocate onto the stack. And then we just popped that address into SI and we basically knew where to copy from uh, to put ourselves into the correct spot. So we might want to use uh, the same trick here. So we can go uh, call um, um, yeah, so go call uh, protected to real. This would basically put this, the address of this instruction onto the stack. And then um, in protected to real, we can just pop that address and do something. Um, so if we go down here, protected to real would be something like uh, pop uh, address. And so this is pseudo code, right? Um, so it would be pop address and then do something and then uh, jump address, right? Uh, and this do something here would be the um, basically going from uh, project to real, and then we jump that address, and this would hit this uh, control, uh, this flow here, this instruction, and then uh, real to protected would do the opposite again. Um, of course, we'll also call it, and here we'd have some instruction. And we'll do real to uh, protected, and again, um, just pop the address, do something, and then um, jump back to that address, right? Okay, so I guess in the usage, we can just type in something like call um, protected, uh, um, what do I call this? Um, 
set read mode. Uh, yeah, so, so let's just go ahead and say set read mode. And we know that uh, this would put the return address onto the stack. Okay, so I guess first thing we need to do is look at our browser because we have instructions on how to move back and forth between uh, different modes uh, here in mode switching. So if we want to switch back to real address mode, uh, what we are told to do is, um, so we need to clear the PE bit in CR0 uh, with a move. Uh, okay, so let, let's look at the steps. So we need to do a CLI first. If page is enabled, it's not in our case. Uh, transfer program control to a readable segment. Okay, so I guess here we'd need to do a jump with a uh, real mode segment. Um, I think, and um, then we need to reset the registers if we're going to use them. Um, I guess even if we're not going to use them, uh, we're going to have to set them. And um, okay, and then we, I guess we don't really need to do this. Then we clear the PE flag to go back to actually uh, go back to real mode. And then we execute a far jump to um, flush the uh, instruction queues and, and load the appropriate segments, uh, code segment. Um, and then we reload the other segments as needed. Um, and then we can reset the instructions or uh, re-enable the instructions. Um, okay. Okay, so let's uh, let's try to do that. Um, okay, so here we go. So CLI first. Um, actually, I forgot to do something. Uh, yep. So let's call this set real mode. Um, right. So we have uh, CLI. We know that we have the address somewhere. So let's pop it into some register. Um, Let's put it into EDX. We never use it, so. Um, right, so now the problem that we have is that since we're going to set... Um, si since we're going to pop this uh, address here, um, So the problem that we are going to have is that if we have set, uh, imagine that before we call this uh, real mode, we wanted to basically pass some arguments into the uh, real mode side of the of the execution. So from projected mode, we do something like push uh, EAX, right? So put EAX onto the stack, and then we call um, uh, set real mode, um, and here we expect that we can read, uh, so let's do it something like this. So here we can expect that we can read whatever we've pushed here uh, into read mode, right? Except that there is no guarantee that this can uh, succeed because the stack pointer can actually be clobbered. Um, so what we need to do is actually we need to save the stack pointer somewhere. Um, and I guess to do that, what's the easiest way to do it? I guess the easiest way to do that is just go ahead and define here. Um, um, let's just put it somewhere up here. Um, So what do I call it? Um, let's call it something like this. And this would be a uh, double word. Um, and we don't really care about what value it has. So let's set to zero for now. Um, 
Right, so what we can do now is we can just go ahead and uh, save our uh, basically ESP into that uh, register. So we can go ahead and do move. Um, so it's a D word and it's, um, I guess we move it into the address of uh, stack pointer, I think I've called it. And what we move in is the value of ESP. Right, so now let's um, go and do the uh, opposite, which is move SP um, word. Uh, and here we are in, uh, so here, let me just do something like this, just so that we uh, know what we're doing. So here we are in real mode. So this would be um, real side. Uh, okay. So here we're just gonna move uh, stack pointer back and you can see that uh, the stack pointer is going to shrink. It's going to, it's going to be just uh, one word here in real mode. That's fine. Um, and I guess, yeah, so we can enable the uh, um, interrupts. And of course we can just go ahead and jump into uh, whatever we've saved into EDX here, which is the address we want to uh, return to basically. Um, right. Um, okay. So here we need to do some other stuff. If we go back to the browser, let's see what we need to do. So here we did this, this we don't care. So we need to do this and this. So three and four we need to do. Uh, five we're not going to do. And we need to do also uh, six, uh, which is what we forgot to do. Um, right, so let's start with six. Six is pretty easy, okay? Uh, so to do six, we're just going to have to, um, I guess we're going to have to do it on the um, real side here. Um, yeah, we're going to have to do it on the real side. So we're going to move into EAX. Um, the control register zero, and then we're gonna and it with some value. Um, and let's compute that value very quickly here. So what we want is basically we want to have, um, um, so all bits set to uh, one, except the very last one. Um, yeah, so that basically would make the uh, bit zero uh, a zero. So here we can see that this gives us fe and we can just go ahead and do, um, so we can do it something like this, fe, or we can be a bit smarter about it and go ahead and do um, this just on al, which is the, just the lowest um, byte. Um, I guess that works. And then we're going to move it back, uh, move uh, CR0, um, so move EIX back into, back into CR0. And I guess we need to do also, um, so let me go back to this. Uh, so we did six, um, we did seven. No, we did not do seven, uh, but we did um, we did nine. Okay, so, so what we need to do is uh, three, four, seven, and eight. Uh, okay, so three, four, seven, and eight. Let's uh, let's do let's do three first. Uh, I guess three. We need to basically jump, transfer the control into our. Um, uh, real mode side, I guess, and we need to load a sort of register into, uh, let me just go back. Um, so we need a, a readable segment that has a limit of 64 uh, kilobytes. Um, okay. So I guess we need to create 
that limit then? Um, hmm. Do we actually need to create it or? Um, Okay, so I guess we are going to need to add um, another segment because um, here it says that we need to actually transfer the uh, operation to a register with segment limit of uh, FFFF. F, uh, and then we'll also need a data segment with these uh, values set. So let's create another segment, another 16-bit segment. So Let's go back here, let's go back here. And what I will do is I will actually um, rename these. This would be 32 uh, bit. Uh, no, actually, let's call this protected code. Uh, uh, protected data, and here we'd have real code and uh, real uh, data. Right, so I guess we'll uh, copy these uh, over here, over here, and we'll go ahead real quick. And also, yeah, uh, what that will do is it will uh, move our uh, register here, because now we want to hit, um, so 0, 1, 2, 3 instead of 2. Um, so if I bring up the calculator again and uh, go ahead and just do this. Um, so zero, zero, uh, this is the requested privilege level. It says zero. This is um, the table index it says zero for GDT. And then we'd have, um, what was it? Uh, zero, one, two, three. So here we'd have three, which is zero x 18. So let's put zero x 18 in there. And it should also move this one here. Um, which would be four, so I guess this, so it becomes 0x20. Fine. And I guess this one here would be 18 too. Um, maybe it'd be nice if we could just put this into a variable of something or something, but um, I guess it's fine. Um, yeah, I guess it's fine for now. Uh, right, uh, so let's go ahead and um, create, yeah, we forgot to do this. So let's go ahead and create our uh, segments. Uh, so let's go back to the browser. So what we want is, we want our limit to be, um, so FFFFF, FFFF, right? Uh, so we want our limit to be FFFF. So this we have, right? Uh, we just need to zero out this uh, remaining limit, which is this here. So here we put a zero. Um, our base would be zero still, uh, and uh, all our bases will be zero. That's already the case. And then let's look at the access uh, flags. I think there's nothing to change on the access flags is there. Um, now, the access flags should be fine. So I guess the only thing that we'll need to change is this uh, flags here. Um, and I guess G would need to be zero now because we want to address uh, one byte blocks uh, in 64, uh, 16 bit. And DB would need to be zero because we want this descriptor to be a 16-bit uh, segment. And uh, L would be still zero because uh, why, why would we set it? So let's do that. Uh, so let me just clear this and go ahead and set. So zero, 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 that would be zero. Cool, we need the calculator. Uh, okay, so let me set that. So here would be zero and here would be zero. Um, oh yeah, actually, no, um, made a mistake because this here, uh, oops, whoops, sorry, sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, I was 
talking about this. Here we put zero in flags, um, which is this tetrad here. Uh, right, so here we have copied uh, code segments and we know that uh, data segment needs to have, um, what's it called? Um, um, the execution bit to, to zero. So if we go ahead and copy, uh, um, what did we put in there? Yeah, 9a. So if we put in 9a here, you can see that the third um, bit is set. So we need to unset it and it gives us 92. So we just need to put 92 here instead of 9a for it to be a uh, data register. Cool. So now we have our register and we know that it's uh, the first one, the code register. So it's 0x8. We've already computed this before. And then we just go to, um, I guess, real side. Um, uh, let's call it yeah, real side. That, that's fine. Keeping it real here. Uh, okay, so uh, now we are in the real side. So we did step, um, let's go back here. So here we did this step here. Um, I don't know if we're going to need this um, for now. Um, because we're not gonna do anything with these uh, segments right away. We're just gonna go ahead straight into uh, the jump, right? So the clear, we've done the clear, I think. Um, yeah, so we've cleared that and we've set it and we just go ahead straight to jump and anyway, we're gonna override the uh, segments with uh, the real value here by writing zeros in them. So there's no need to do four, I think. We're gonna see if it crashes, but um, for now, let's just not do it. Uh, okay, so back to here. Uh, so this is done. Now here we are. We uh, basically did the move. We've disabled PE, which is the last bit here in uh, CR0. Uh, so effectively, we are into uh, real mode. We just need to do a, um, I guess we need to clear out the registers, uh, the segments, so, sorry, the segment registers. So XOR AX with itself to zero it out. And then we're going to move um, into the S. So basically, we're going to write a bunch of zeros into uh, all the registers that we have. Um, well, not all of them. We're just going to focus on the main ones. Um, are they asking us to do all of them? Yeah, they ask us to do all of them, so let's do it. So um, I guess here we have FS. Uh, let's see, what else did I forget? Yeah, GS, I guess. Um, right, so let's do GS also. Okay, so that's all of them, I think. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to flush uh, do the jump, the second jump that they asked us to do. Uh, so basically we are um, here. Um, and actually we might want to do that before we do this. Okay. Um, okay, well, let's do that. Uh, so just before we zero out this, we need to do a jump, remove it from here. Um, so we need to jump into zero, which is our uh, code um, uh, segment in real mode. Um, and we want to go to uh, some, uh, let's call it uh, real mode, uh, enter. And this would be, uh, this will be it, enter, right? Um, so we do this and let's see what we what else we need to do. So execute a far jump 
uh, to a real address mode program. This instruction, uh, yeah, blah, blah. And then we load uh, all the registers by writing zeros into them, and then we enable uh, STI, and then we're done. So I guess that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, so we um, re-enable those, and then we just go ahead and jump into uh, into where we want to go. Okay, so here we have, uh, we're basically done with this. Um, so we can now go back and forth between, well, it still remains to be tested, but in theory we can go back and forth, we can go back from protected mode into real mode, if we call this uh, function. And just to, uh, I think, just to make it a bit easier to use. Um, hmm. Should we... Um, maybe we can introduce a macro to help us with that. Um, right, so let's... Uh, Let's call it um, go real, um, and basically what it will do is use thirty two uh, just to ensure that we are in the correct mode, and I will call. Um, I guess we don't want to call too far, uh, and what did I call that? function we call it set real mode so set real mode and then we're going to use 16 going forward just to ensure that uh, we don't forget to put the use 32 and use 16 uh, going back and forth otherwise the uh, processor will not know um, how to interpret interpret correctly the instructions we give it uh, let's also create another macro call it go um, go prot right um, and here we do the opposite we basically start with a u16 and we end with a use 32 and then we go a call near uh, set protected mode um, right I think that's um, that's it so we just need to basically uh, write this and we'll be we'll be done with this uh, with this video, okay. So let's try to do that. So here we are still in U sixteen. So um, you know what? Just for the sake of of having it, we'll repeat it. Just so that if we move the functions somewhere else, uh, we don't forget to have it. Um, so set prod mode. Um, Right, so here we need to go back to our uh, browser and see what they're asking us to do. Yeah, and this is basically what we've done before, so we can just go ahead and start copying stuff from uh, from what we did before. So let's go to the code and see what we have here. So uh, CLI, load GDT, do that thing, and then we do a jump. So let's start with these. Um, right, and here we are still in, uh, yeah, in 16-bit mode, that's fine. And here we just need to change this to basically jump into um, some label that we have. Uh, let's call it prot, uh, prot side. Let's just um, do that. Here we have prot side. Um, Right, and in pro side, basically we have to use uh, 32 bit instructions. Um, and basically, what we're gonna do is go back here, just copy these uh, all the way down, go here, do that. Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, format that a bit better. And I think, oh, yeah, yeah, there's some big mistake there. Um, this would be, this would need to remain. Um, is there something we forget? Oh yeah, there's something we're forgetting. We are, 
we have forgot to save uh, the stack pointer, so it might be absolutely destroyed by the by this operation. So what we need to do uh, is basically um, just after the CLI with um, also also um, we need to get the address. Uh, so same thing we did here, um, except that this time we know that we're coming from 16 bit, so the address might be a bit smaller, so we need to empty out uh, ADX, and then we're going to pop um, into DX, basically. So that's fine, and then we're going to save, um, hold on, let me just copy this, and go ahead and do that, and this would be just... Uh, SP, um, yeah, that looks, that looks okay. Uh, right, and then we are going to load GDTR. We're gonna do the things here that we need to do. Uh, and then we're gonna jump into um, this protected side. We're gonna init all our uh, registers. And then we are gonna set back so basically let me just copy this down uh here oops so do that um uh, maybe here we're just gonna do hmm. now but we still want to have the full word even if uh we're just using sp but we're still gonna want to push uh the full width so that when we get it back here um it's basically uh, a D word, right? Um, okay, so here we are going to jump into Xerox. Um, actually, no, we have already loaded our uh, code segment here. So we can just go ahead and jump into EDX where we've put our, um, our address here. So I guess that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, cool. So I guess we can just go ahead and see if this builds. Uh, this will um, this will complain that main doesn't exist. So um, we're probably just gonna go ahead and do something like this. Okay, so we're just gonna jump into this uh, forever loop uh, for now. Um, Otherwise, it looks pretty okay uh, overall. So yeah, let's go ahead and try to build this. Okay, so make, uh, yeah, make dash b all. Okay, so what is the problem here? Uh, undefined symbol, okay. Um, okay, okay, that's actually, that's actually fine. Uh, there we go, that should fix it. Hmm. Yeah, let's just make it a uh, an independent label. Um, okay, so it's building, I guess. So um, let's see if we go into uh, protected mode or not. Let's uh, let's try it. So uh, box uh, debug uh, debug. Let's go. Um, okay, so we have box here. We can go ahead and set our breakpoint at 0802 and continue. Okay, we've hit it. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to... Hmm. Now actually it's not gonna work because we have that uh, video issue on, on, on box, don't we? So let's try to just continue here and see. Um, Uh, okay, that's uh, that's weird. That 
is weird. Okay, hold on, let me just do something. Uh, right. Okay. So for some reason it just refuses to boot. So let's see. We're having issues here. Major issues. Okay. Um, although I don't know what these bytes at the end are. Oh, I, I guess these are the. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be fine. So this would be the data that we added here. Right, right, cool. Cool, so that looks okay, I think. So let's set a breakpoint and see where, we, uh, where we're going to have the issue. And actually, let's just do something else. Let's um, go ahead and just um, do this. Right. Okay. So let's um, let's go back here. Go there. Rebuild that. Um, go here, and we're gonna execute that. Right. So let me set a um, breakpoint at um, eight o two again. See that there, and we'd want to go all the way down here to this um, instruction. So let's. These are uh, some, uh, so from 0802 to 0x950 or something. And let's see what we have. Uh, so CLI, I guess this is our first instruction uh, here. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, that's, that looks looks good. So 8a8, so break at 8. Uh, A8. Okay, we go. Right, so now we have our breakpoint. So let's go ahead and step into there. Um, let's load uh, our LGDT from this address here. So first, let's take a look at. Um, uh, so it's just four of them. And here we have a DS. 0x9 e0. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what we have here. Um, um, so what's the structure here? Uh, we have a word first, which is the size, I guess. Uh, so this one here minus one, and then we'd have a, uh, I guess, a double word, which is the address of where we are writing this. So let's go to that address. It should be just a bit uh, below, so 6e6. And here we have, uh, so d word, d word, that's this. And then we have four bytes, that's that. So that's our zero entry, and then this would be our uh, real code uh, entry here. So zero, FFFF000, zero, 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 and then A9, and a bunch, a bunch of zeros. So that's that looks fine. So let's load our um, GDTR, and we can take a look at it by going to SREG. Here we can see that GDTR 
is at base address this with limit uh, 27, which is uh, good. Okay, let's uh, step into our things. So let's look at our uh, register uh, here. What do we have in a EAX? We have six. Um, okay, I uh, have no idea what that is, but we can just uh, grab our um, calculator and try to figure that out. So we have uh, six zero 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 uh, zero one zero. Uh, yeah, actually, missing a zero. Yep, looks good. So in binary, that's this. And if we go back to our, uh, I guess it was chapter two or something, control registers, right. Uh, so let me just bring this up and maybe hide this. Um, right, so here what we have is uh, so these four bytes are not set and then we have ET set and then we have uh, nothing else set all the way to uh, cache disable and um, what is it? Dot write through. Um, okay, and I guess yeah, so that's fine. Uh I guess now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, just step into that so that we can or it, right? So now we have added that one there, which would be uh, enabling our uh, prohibit mode. And then we're going to move that back into, um, into CR0. And here, if I type in CREG, I think we can see, yeah. You can see, so um, the things that are uppercase are enabled, uh, other, otherwise they are disabled. So you can see that here we have PE uh, enabled. So now we actually have uh, project mode enabled. So what we need to do now is uh, we need to go ahead and do this jump here to 8BD. So let's go ahead and do that. And this jump brings us um, so here, and let's set this. We set our registers, all of them, and let's take a look at what we have uh, in our uh, SREG. So here we can see that our code segment has 0 x 18. It's good. Um, right, uh, it's good. You can see it's 32-bit. Uh, it's read, uh, execute and read. Um, here in our uh, data segment, you can see that we have, um, so from 000 all the way uh, to the limit to four gigs, and uh, we have read write uh, access, that's fine. So so all the way until now, we are doing, we're doing fine. So let's step, um, is that jump F? Um, okay, and here we just loop forever, right? Okay, so that looks like we are doing, wait, interrupt. Uh, gate descriptor is not valid. Oh, oh, hmm. I see. Okay, I see. I see what the issue is. So let's, for now, just disable this. Disable interrupts for now. Uh, we're not going to handle interrupts. We are loading... Um, we are writing a bootloader. So let me just go ahead, uh, try to find what is the last breakpoint we've put in. Should be that one. And we can go ahead and jump all the way there. Right, um, so uh, let's go ahead and step into that. So we are jumping there, we are moving, and here we are doing the jump into um, 
uh, forever. So this instruction here is this instruction here. Um, so let's look at our system registers. Do we have every uh, set up correctly? Um, yeah, I think. Um, yep, looks good. Uh, although, hmm. Our um, code, uh, our data segment doesn't say it's 32 bit, which is a bit worrying, but um, I guess it should be fine. Right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so it doesn't reset the machine. All right, cool. So it was just the um, interrupts that we're not yet managing um, that created the problem. Okay, so let's now go back here and let's just uh, re-enable the video stuff. Go ahead, re build this. Um, okay, what's the problem here? Oh yeah, of course, uh, I need to stop this for it to be able to build. Right. Cool. So let's go ahead and run it now. Um, cool. Well, not so cool, but we'll see. Um, let's try it on uh, QNU. Okay, so after a bit of troubleshooting, I found what was blocking us. So what we needed is just this here, this U16. Um, I also what I did is I moved uh, the newer helpers uh, we've created uh, to the top. And the reason why we need this U16 here is that before we have included this helper here, but we didn't have any of this uh, code. So we were still in 16, uh, so in, in U16 uh, or in, in, in 16 bit mode assembly. But here we've added this U32, which basically says that everything that's, um, everything that's below this would be considered uh, as a 32 bit um, instructions, right? Well, no, because these helpers here. Uh, are still 16-bit instructions, right? So this U16 here is needed so that we have the correct behavior. Otherwise, it will just not uh, run. It will run, but it will interpret um, the instructions in a weird way, which would make uh, the CPU behave uh, erratically. So let's uh, go ahead now and just compare, compile that try to run it, uh, so let's run it. And we can see that it still uh, changes um, modes, video modes, and it's still running, it's not doing anything weird. And if we look at the uh, QMU log files, we can see that uh, we are actually uh, loading the, so we can see that uh, our code uh, and other data segments are at the right values. Um, and we are also executing the instruction at uh, 93, which is just this uh, loop here. So yeah, uh, I guess we have done all that we needed to do today. Um, so we still have just these two helpers to test, which we'll be doing uh, shortly. Next time we are going to get started on um, setting up the uh, C ABI to be able to execute our C uh, code from uh, from here. And then we'll start working on uh, the paging stuff. But 
that's it for today. Uh, if you have any uh, comments or questions, leave them down below and I'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye.